Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm John Timmerman, and thank you to Kevin for introing me. I hope everybody's having a great day. A uh, little rainy out there, but it's better than snow, right? Yeah. Um, and hopefully it keeps, the temperature keeps going. We'll see. So he gave a nice little background of myself. I'll just kind of top that off. Um, as he mentioned, I started a personal training company that was uh, an online platform where people could go and sign up for personal training programs, no matter where they were in the world. And that was right around the time when social media, um, in its, its truest sense of the form, was kind of launching, right? Facebook was just coming out of the colleges, college scene into, into the public uh, so that anybody could use it. Uh, Twitter was, was, um, had just been, been founded and was growing. Uh, MySpace was there, which now MySpace isn't really a social media network anymore. But right at the time social media was becoming a thing, a marketing thing, um, I was trying to teach myself how to use it to market my business, the new fit. So uh, fast forward until now. As he said, now I own and operate uh, Good Monster. We're a digital marketing agency with a strong focus in social media and content production. Um, in between that time, I've you know, started and failed a few different businesses, all utilizing social media uh, for uh, a key part of its growth. Um, by the way, any Snapchat users out there? Right there. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot about Snapchat if you haven't already, um, if you follow anything about social media. Uh, and I'll mention it a little bit in my talk. But what's the ROI of social media? This question has been asked by literally everybody who is even thinking about social media in any type of business, in any, any industry, okay? The reason is because social media still is very new. It's a very new thing for a lot of people, right? TV's been around for a long time. Before that, radio. Before that, print and billboard. These things are very familiar. People generally have numbers that are associated with what's the ROI of this, right? But social media, uh, number one, is still relatively new. And number two, it still is kind of a separate thing. It's, it's not uh, adopted as just marketing or advertising, all right? It's starting, but a lot of businesses still look at it like it's a separate thing that I need to go and see if it's worthwhile. Whereas when we say marketing or advertising, um, people automatically think, okay, well that's, you know, I need to do some PR and, and maybe some TV commercials or write some articles and, and things like that, right? So, so we're just starting now to realize that social media isn't a separate thing. It is part of this whole marketing, PR, and now advertising strategy. But what's the ROI? Is there a number we can associate it with it? Is there a percentage that we can say, hey, if we dedicate X amount of time or dollars to social media, how much will it bring us back, right? And I'm here to explain that question and explain really the only answer to that question, uh, no matter who you are, what business industry uh, you are in or, or uh, attempting to be in. So I want to start out with a quick little story. When I was about 13 years old, uh, we, my family got uh, our first, I'm sorry, our second dog. His name was Cody. Cody was uh, a golden retriever. Little mix in there. I think it was like he, was, he had like a shepherd in there or something like that. So he was a little undersized. He's kind of the runt of the litter. But Cody was uh, feverishly always trying to get somebody's attention, right? Who here, anybody own a golden retriever? Have one? Okay. Um, who has a dog? Who loves dogs? I love dogs. I love them. Um, so anybody that uh, knows anything about golden retrievers or has friends or family that has golden retrievers, they are one of the most attention-seeking dogs out there. All they want is your love. That's it. Right? That is literally the only thing that they want. If you pet them, they sit down, they start panting, and they're just happy. They'll do that for literally the entire day until you stop. All right? That is the MO of the golden retriever. Uh, retrievers in general, but from my experience, golden retrievers, they love it, right? So, so Cody um, always wanted attention, always there. We came home, 
you're huffing and puffing, it's just sat down, wanted to pet, right? You stop petting him, you go over, put your bags down, or you know, my, my school books down, he'd follow you right over there. Sit down, wait for you to pet him. The entire time we're home, he would follow us around until he literally just collapsed from exhaustion and went to sleep for the night, all right? He was so hell-bent on getting our attention. So the reason I tell you this story about Cody, my dog, is that is the landscape of social media, right? The landscape of social media is all about attention. That is it when you boil it down. That's why people are on social media uh, to either garner their own attention, to give their attention to somebody else, to follow somebody who's funny, to follow a news organization on Twitter, uh, to follow somebody who makes creative Snapchat videos. They're giving and receiving attention, all right? It's like a brokerage, okay? Social media is kind of like a brokerage for attention. No matter what platform we're talking about, YouTube, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Vine, doesn't matter, they are all about attention, right? The exact thing that Cody wanted nothing more than to receive at all times was attention. So, how do we get that attention? That's the key that everybody wants to know, whether you're in my spot where we're trying to find out how to get the attention of our clients, customers, or audiences, whether you're a marketing director or a CMO for a company and you're trying to figure out what vendors or what platforms or what uh, uh, uses um, uh, are out there for garnering your company or your brand's attention. If you're an individual, right, uh, social media networks are becoming more and more equipped to help individuals get their own attention. So people who maybe aren't marketing on behalf of their, their company, but they're trying to educate people. Um, LinkedIn's a great place for this because it's kind of an individual platform, even though they have company profiles. Um, it's kind of individual uh, attention trading. So um, <clears throat> the social media landscape, all about attention. So when we talk about the ROI of social media, whether you're new to social media, okay, who actually, who here is already pretty well entrenched in social media, either personally or professionally? Like you feel like you know, let's say 60% of what's out there. You know what it's about, okay. Um, who here is pretty new? You're here to like learn like what's social media or, or learn you know, the new strategies. Cool. So most people here, most people here have, a, have a good grasp of, of you know, social media and, and what its opportunities are. So when we talk about the ROI, if so, who, who here actually could, could tell somebody, their boss, um, the owner of the company, a client, if you're a, a marketing um, consultant, who here could actually have an answer within the next 10 seconds of what the ROI, I'm not gonna ask you by the way, what the ROI of social media is. Raise your hand if you think you could answer it in 10 seconds. Okay, okay. Uh, believe me, I struggle with this one too, right? It's, it's, it's a tough question to answer. It's a very tough question to answer, but I do have the answer for you. Um, so when we talk about the ROI of social media, you have to look at what the value is. Right? Like, what is the end thing that you could get out of social media? And that's attention, right? Asking the ROI or what the ROI of social media is like asking what the ROI of a networking event is. What is the ROI of knowing somebody very important? Knowing somebody who's very well connected. What's the ROI of going to a family Christmas party and you have an uncle who is the CEO of some random company and chumming him up and asking him about his business to learn a few things to potentially tap into his network. Asking what the ROI of social media is, is like, what's the ROI of you coming here today? What is the ROI of going to college? What is the ROI of having friends? What is the ROI of spending time with your friends? There's no direct answer to this because it is not a uh, it is not a quantifiable number that you can associate with getting a ton of attention. 
okay? Uh, there are minute data points when, which you can say, hey, if I spend X amount of dollars with Facebook advertising, potentially, how many dollars could I get back? Well, you could do the math, and we do that in our agency, right? We do that. You could do the math to figure out how many products you potentially could sell or how many clients you potentially could bring in with leads and things like that. But when somebody says, what's the ROI of social media? The answer is simply, how much time are you willing to put into your social media efforts? How much time are you willing to put into networking events? How much time are you willing to put into going out for drinks with friends? The ROI that you're going to get from a friend is exactly whatever you're going to put into it. Okay? If you have a group of friends that you always deny their ass for, hey, you want to meet out for drinks? No, thanks. If they do it all the time, chances are they're going to stop asking you. Right? So the ROI for social media is the same as the ROI for any relationship instance in your life. The more time that you put into it, education, engagement, research, customer research, client research, audience research, whatever that might, might be. The more time that you put into it, the more it's going to give you back, right? The more value it will bring back to you. Um, I get a quick little stat here that's super broad, but just to give you a, 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 an idea, because I want to head into something real quick. I'm not sure, who here is in a B2B type business where your customers are other businesses? Um, the most resistance we get usually is with B2B companies because they, they often say, well, I just don't know if my clients are really there. Like, I don't think my clients are on Facebook. You know, we're selling to, you know, big manufacturing companies. I don't think, you know, LinkedIn, yeah, maybe LinkedIn, but, you know, Twitter, I don't think so. I don't think they're there. I don't think we're going to make any sales there. Uh, but I'd like to change this, this a little bit, right? So now that we know that the ROI, the best thing you can say when somebody asks the ROI, what's the ROI? Well, how much time can you put into it? Because if we put a good amount of time into it and really make it work, you're going to have a killer ROI. Your ROI is going to be an amazing amount of attention. It can be very targeted, blah, blah, blah. So knowing that 75% of Americans uh, use social media uh, and talking about a B2B company or a B2B industry, the simple answer to that is since 75% are on social media, um, and this is, by the way, this is using it uh, relatively regularly. This is from... I just realized I didn't put the source up there, but it's Sprout Social, which is like a Hootsuite, if you're familiar with that, um, that came from there. So saying that my customers, my B2B customers aren't on social media is, is a little bit of an ig ignorant statement because they are on social media somewhere, right? Even if they're not on LinkedIn, chances are the CEO of that company that you'd like to do business with is on Facebook following his grandkids and his pictures and his daughter and you know, sharing, sharing with family around the country that they don't see very often, okay? Yeah, maybe they're not on Twitter. Uh, chances are they're on Facebook. They might be on LinkedIn, okay? They're probably looking at YouTube videos for education somewhere, somewhere along the line, right? How to chop wood, like who knows? But they're there. It's just, we, we need to think about the fact that, okay, they're, maybe they're not there looking to buy your services, but could you impact them? Could you do a Facebook ad that targets all the CEOs in New York State on Facebook, um, uh, targeted by industry, and try to get a message in front of them that aligns with maybe what their problems might be? Sure, they're going to be looking through Facebook, but if they see an ad that comes up, an ad that is sponsored, that's, uh, that's native to the platform, it's not something that pops up in their face, and it's engaging, and it piques their interest, they're probably not going to click on it the first time. They're probably not going to click on it the second time. They're probably not going to click on it the first 15 times, right? But remember what I said, what's the ROI of social media? It's the time that you put into it. It used to be that it took people, I think the old stat, maybe some of you marketers out there could, could tell me, but it used to be that uh, it took like six times or seven times for somebody to see an ad before they took action. That used to be the, you know, the moniker. Now it's like 50. I can tell you from our data, 
of Google Analytics and using it to see how many people come back, it's 50 plus times that people look at something, click on something before they actually take action, right? So because of this fight for attention, like my dog Cody, always fighting for attention, right? This fight for attention, re it requires a lot of time. So if you're doing these Facebook ads in front of these B2B potential uh, clients, whether it be on Facebook or you've identified that it's on Twitter or LinkedIn, Instagram now offers ads. Um, Instagram demographic is going up and up and up in age uh, as more people get onto it. So the statement that, that my customers aren't there is flat out false. It's finding where they might be even when they're there personally and trying to figure out how to gra grab their attention, build brand awareness, solve their problems uh, in order to get them to where you want, to, want them to be. Maybe it's a landing page, maybe it's your website, maybe it's to click to sign up for something, an event, whatever it might be. The key is to put in the time to educate yourself, put in the time to build your brand, garner attention, and draw them in to seeing that you are a solution. They might be on Facebook looking at their grandkids' photos. But remember, if they're a CEO of a company, any of you business owners out there, you know that there's about 80% of the hours out of the day, their mind is on business. So if there's a solution that they see, even if they're looking at their grandkids' photos, chances are they're gonna check it out, okay? Um, I just wanna pull up a couple of examples. I know this is a m massive company, but, but Maersk is a, a shipping company global, huge, right? Their clients aren't you or me. They're not the normal person that's floating around on Twitter looking at news. They're not the Facebook uh, crowd that's, uh, or, or they're not the Facebook crowd, I should say, that's uh, looking at photos and uh, looking at their grandkids' photos um, or looking at new products and sharing funny videos. Their customers are big, um, you know, C-level executives. Uh, people, decision makers, people that are gonna, going to hire them to ship their products. Um, yet they put a huge amount of stock into social media. A huge amount of time. Yes, they're a bigger company. They have the ability to hire a full team to be able to do this. But even if we were to shrink that down to, um, to a manageable local or regional company, okay, you could still get in front of the decision makers, the executives, the C-levels, the people who aren't on social media, okay? Uh, it might be creative uh, content production that educates the crowd on LinkedIn. It might be the same thing, but in a more engaging, witty way on Facebook. It might be more frequently bulleted type news um, quips and quotes on Twitter. It might be massive, uh, pictures of your cool machinery or whatever it might be on Instagram, okay? They do it for a few different reasons. One, awareness. Awareness so that when somebody says, I need a global shipping um, resource, they think of Maersk. Two, culture. Their employees see that their social media channels are very engaging. In fact, if you do some research, you can see a lot of their employees do kind of engage with them on social media. Uh, three, recruitment, okay? They have a giant workforce, and it's, the turnover's got to be ridiculous. But uh, they use this as a recruitment tool. Brand awareness, don't forget, if you're a growing company and you have to hire people, um, brand awareness is just as effective for hiring talent that, as it is for, for gaining new clients. Um, so... Back to the ROI. I'm going to beat this into your head. It is literally what drives our agency forward. Okay? It is that the ROI of social media is the time that you dedicate, you, your team, your business, dedicates to, uh, to educating yourself and to trying to have conversations with the right type of people. So. I do want to make the point that this is not a work harder type uh, arrangement. This is not something where you just want to do work just for the sake of doing work. 
Um, that's kind of, it's kind of like a life lesson right there anyways. Working hard alone is not great. You still need to work smart, okay? So spending eight hours a day on social media just for the fact of being there will not have a return on your investment. It might, but it won't, have the, 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 it won't maximize your return on your time investment. So what I mean by this is when companies or people tend to get onto a, a social media network or get into social media, they just want to be there. And so they'll start sharing news articles and they'll start sharing things and they'll share and they'll share and they'll share and they'll like and they'll like and they'll like and they'll share and they'll share, right? So the problem with this is it is such a saturated area that sharing articles, unless you are the very first person to share it or the very first resource to share it, that share is probably going to get you very little ROI or attention, right? So you have to be smart with your act the actions that you're taking to social media. If you have the resources to be able to create your own unique content, that's the golden ticket, all right? It's, it's, it's even more golden if you have a talent to be able to write witty uh, tweets or write witty blog posts or uh, take really good photographs or tell really good stories on Snapchat. If you've used Snapchat um, yet, that's really the, the biggest value of Snapchat right now is the, is the story feature where you can take little clips and link them together to tell an entire story. Okay? Some people tell stories about their day. Some people make up stories. If you can find an actor to follow, that's pretty interesting because they are literally creating their own little mini TV shows on there. Um, Taco Bell actually is a really good one to follow. Quick side note. Um, they do some really creative stuff. Uh, but, but when you're, when you're uh, looking to, to try to get that ROI, you have to make sure that you're working smart with social media. And because it's so saturated, simply sharing content for the sake of sharing content is a waste of your time. It is probably about as effective as doing nothing on social media. It's got to the point where it is that saturated. Now, with a new one like a Snapchat, you could get away with it for a little while. There's another new app out there, Anchor. Anchor is a, uh, a voice app where you can record a two-minute long voice recording of whatever you want and then post it. And you can post it to your Twitter and, and it kind of... Um, it's posted natively on Twitter, but then people can submit their own voice recordings to respond to it. Okay, it's uh, it's probably the newest, faster-growing app out there. So just by getting on there and just having conversations, uh, you can get a lot of attention. But once this one grows, same thing. Just getting on there will get you no attention. So my suggestion: you you want to put your efforts into. Uh, uh, deconstructing your audience, simply identify what their pains, their problems are, and what type of solution can you offer them. It doesn't have to be a sales pitch for, hey, I can do this for you. It can be simply helping them um, with a problem that might be aligned with your service or your product or whatever it is, the, the reason you're on social media. Okay. Um, the exception to this rule might be as if you're just purely on there for, for entertaining people. Uh, if you're an actor, a comedian, you're an aspiring comedian, a writer, um, a photographer, you're still solving a, pro a problem, right? People have bad days. You can lift them up, right? So it's still a problem. It always boils down to being able to solve a problem. But you have to put out content that is going to, be a, that is going to grab people's attention throughout all the saturation. So I could go through a million different examples, and I'll uh, actually take a bunch of questions and even make up some of my own questions if you guys don't ask me them uh, in, in just a second. But you can come up with a million different examples of ways that you can go into the legal field, the consumer field, the pet field, uh, uh, the manufacturing industry. And relatively, with, with relative ease, especially if you really know your industry, uh, create content <clears throat> that will solve people's problems find a way to serve that content to your demographic, whether it's via paid advertising on one of these platforms, whether it's hashtagging, whether it's uh, calling them out, straight up tagging them on Instagram or on Twitter. Okay? There's a lot of different ways that you can get this content in front of the right people. Okay? 
So how, the, the only way to get that attention is to break through the noise with unique, smart content, OK? Um, so if I leave you with one thing, it would be today, do a simple exercise of deconstructing your audience. Who are they? You've heard this before. You all are marketers at some level. Who's your avatar? Who's your person? If you picture them right now, you close your eyes. What do they look like? What are their problems? Deconstruct them that way. And then do a simple audit of where you're spending your time. If, your time, if, if, if you are not putting out content on Twitter that is relevant to that avatar, I probably suggest that you stop spending time on Twitter now and put it to another platform where you have a better voice, you're, you have a better chance of getting through to a potential customer who, who might potentially buy your services. Because uh, if you're a salesperson, you know sales usually cures everything. Okay? Um, don't feel like you have to be on every single social media network. There are so much, is so much noise out there now that there's not going to, again, th th this depends on who you are, but most people are not going to notice if you aren't posting every two hours on Twitter. Okay? So if you're just posting every two hours, you have it loaded into your Hootsuite to post and share something every two hours on Twitter, it's not worth your time. It's not. Maybe go film a YouTube video and share that directly with people who might get some, uh, some uh, uh, um, value out of it, okay? And send it individually to people on different networks. Look for questions on Twitter. Look for questions on Instagram. Hey, I'm looking to uh, start a diet. Anybody have any, any suggestions? Answer them. Answer them with a video. Okay, do, do things that other people aren't doing. Do things that are impactful. Um, but start by de deconstructing your customer, deconstruct your audience, and try to solve their problems with your content, your uniquely created content. Okay? Um, and that is the best way to get attention. You have to cut through the noise. And to cut through the noise, you have to be unique. All right? Snapchat is big on our minds right now. It's, it's a huge opportunity. It's something that uh, a lot of people don't really think as an opportunity yet. But I will say, again, if you're on Snapchat, follow Taco Bell. They, they do a great job at being super creative. For instance, the latest one that they just did is uh, they made Snapchat into a video game. And so it clips between like frames of stories. And what they did, and the way it works is you can, you can set the time for how long you want a video or a, uh, a photo to display. And so they did these quick clips of uh, just basically photos of somebody like walking, right? And so it was like clip, walk, 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 walk. And then they did an extended one. And on there they said, tap this to have whatever the guy's name was, kick a soccer ball, right? And so the, the photo was there for 10 seconds. But with Snapchat, if you touch the screen, it skips to the next one. And so you, you tap the little circle that they said tap, and then it went to the next screen, which was him kicking a soccer ball. So it was, it was like you were playing a little video game. Um, so top of mind of, of probably the coolest new, really unique type campaign that I've seen, that's the one. In terms of us, um, I won't go into detail of who it was, but I can, I can tell you that outside the box, um, one of the cooler things that we did for uh, a client, this one just sticks out. This is actually a while ago, but we, we did a video that tapped into, um, they, they wanted to get an audience at a, at a sports arena, and um, they wanted to do something that told a story of like the evolution of their client. And so what we did is we took a, a really young, I think they were like six years old, and we did a video that showed different stages of their life all the way through adulthood. Um, by the way, the, the demographic at, at this arena was, it's a lot of, a lot of parents, okay? And so what we did is we, we um, in, in video, we told the story of the evolution of that potential client from a young age all the way up to uh, early 30s. And then we broke that video out into the each, each of the smaller um, demographics. 
obviously not six years old, but when we took the teenagers and we, we marketed the individual videos to the platforms that would be most appropriate for that demographic, right? So the older demographic, um, we marketed on Facebook. Um, the 20s, we did on Twitter. The younger demographic um, on Instagram and so forth. So that worked out really well. So outreach is huge on social media because there's so much noise. So in order to stand out, it's very difficult simply to put out content and get noticed, right? And so even if you're putting out your smart content, you still have to somehow get that content seen. Unless you're starting up a news organization, and even if you are, when you first start, you're still going to have to get some eyeballs on that content. So you're still going to have to do some outreach. But outreach, um, which is essentially a type of PR, uh, is, is huge. And so depending on the platform, so I guess I'll start by it's almost never creepy, right? The message could be creepy, I mean, depending on what it is. But it's so rare to get a message from somebody if it's genuine on social media. So if you're on Instagram, you probably get people all the time that are like, hey, thumbs up, like, good photo, or, you know, love your stuff, follow me on Instagram, or, you know, like spammy stuff like that, right? So that will just get ignored probably, right? People might see that uh, handle come up, you know, and if it's an interesting looking one, they might click on it. And that's what they're going for usually is just that visibility of their profile so that hopefully people will click over. But if you're genuine and you reach out to somebody on Instagram and you say, hey, this picture really inspired me today. I was having a bad day and it just, you know, it just put butterflies in me, right? They're almost... 100% going to respond to you at some point, right? On Twitter, Twitter is still probably the most powerful outreach tool, even though it's very noisy. It's in fact called the fire hose, right? Twitter's fire hose is their news feed. And don't be surprised if this changes very soon because Jack Dorsey, the original CEO, just took over. He's making lots of changes. Um, but Twitter is probably the easiest way because you simply just have to type the person's handle in there and they're going to see it. I should say it'll, it'll be available for them to see. If they're you know, a celebrity with 6.5 million followers, they're probably not going to see it. But um, in saying that, though, if you do that outreach to that 6.5 million follower celebrity, chances are 10,000 people might see it. 10,000 of their fans might see it. Right? If you put the little period in front of their handle, uh, now it'll be displayed to everybody. Or you do like what we like to do is instead of doing the period thing, you write a word like "Hey handle" or like uh, "How you doing today?" Twitter handle, right? So as long as there's a character before that Twitter handle, it'll get noticed by somebody. But in terms of outreach on Twitter, uh, Twitter's got a very powerful search platform that it, it used to be called uh, uh, search.twitter.com, I think. And then it kind of just got integrated into the platform. They still do have an advanced search feature. But go into the advanced search feature. And uh, this is after you've already identified your avatar, their problems, how you can solve them. Go into, search, uh, go into the advanced search of Twitter and start to type in the interests, the keywords, the hashtags, the you know, demographics. You know, experiment with it a little bit. Uh, but try to find people that are asking questions on Twitter about uh, your industry, uh, find people that are just talking about it, and pose questions to them. Uh, that's a very good strategy, is to pose a question to somebody who's also trying to get attention because they're going to jump at being able to answer a question about their profession, right? And so that's a good way to engage somebody using, the, using uh, tw uh, Twitter search feature. Uh, Facebook is a tricky one. Facebook, you can comment as an individual. Um, you can comment as a business uh, only on other businesses' uh, profiles. Uh, there's, you, you can't really go out and sell yourself as a business to people on Facebook because of the privacy blocks and things like that. Um, but commenting is a good way on there. Um, but the outreach, commenting on YouTube, that's another one. Um, also very saturated, so you just have to you know, be cognizant of that. Um, but yeah, so the outreach, one second, sorry. But uh, so, so that's like platform by platform. Um, if we're going into the Snapchat realm, Snapchat's huge because literally all you have to do now 
if if you follow somebody on Snapchat who's like a celebrity, like um, I don't, who here knows who Gary Vaynerchuk is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you follow a celebrity on Snapchat, celebrity, whatever level of celebrity they are, you celebrity influencer, call them an influencer um, on Snapchat. Um, you know, responding to them is more likely to get you their attention on Snapchat than it is on Twitter or Facebook or somewhere where it's just so incredibly saturated that it's going to be tough for you to get their attention. On the flip side, if you have like an, uh, uh, an individual in your, in your business realm on Snapchat, now I know this is very new, so a lot of people are like, my customers aren't there yet, like, so I get it. But uh, if you're looking for that as a platform to be able to engage with people, simply responding on Snapchat with video um, is huge because people just aren't doing it yet. People are still in the consumption mode that all they're doing is like, how does Snapchat work? Like consume, 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 consume. It's not a lot of people that are going through their feed and going like, man, that was cool. Or, uh, you know, hey, that's awesome. It really helped me out today. Or thanks, have a great day. Hey, check out my new episode, my YouTube episode, or whatever it is. There's not a lot of people engaging that way. Um, and real quick, and then I'm going to get to your question. On Twitter, too, responding with video is also something that not a lot of people are doing. Okay? Responding uh, or reaching out to people on Twitter, not with a tweet, but a video, is very likely to get you a response because not a lot of people are doing it. Most people don't have the time. Right? They just send a tweet with a thumbs up. People are getting lazy, I'm telling you. So if you can try to squeeze out a few extra minutes to go above and beyond and create something for somebody, your outreach is much more likely to be effective. Uh, Facebook groups are still pretty valuable too for that same type of thing. Um, if you can, no, no. So, but right, so you, not for your organization, but as an individual, you know, as a champion of your organization, um, you can still get into the Facebook groups, which are highly, um, they're influ influential. You know, if you get in the right one, some of the public ones are massive. Um, but you'll have to do your own research. It's completely dependent on the industry, you know. Um, any other questions? Yes. Okay, you mentioned uh, Dorsey and how he's always changing things, and it's already come up with Dorsey. the Twitter system is going to be changing its algorithm. There's a lot of backlash they had over it, but um, backlash over any change that anybody ever makes oh, yeah. anywhere yeah. ever. Yeah. Look at Starbucks. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So are, are you asking if, I, if, if, we, if we see hashtags still being able to be used as a way to tap into audiences? Not or any hashtag, but like trending ones. So like, yeah, right. Top 10 trend, trends or whatever. Like, uh, like the other day, I don't, I don't know why, like, uh, and I, I, I ended up tweeting out that there was like two top 10 trends for like, or top 10 uh, trends for tags was like Teen Wolf and uh, something to do with like, yeah. So I mean, it's it's it's. Right. I mean, it it just depends, right? Like, so hashtags are they're they're going to be around for a little bit, right? Yeah. Because a lot of platforms are built on their use. Um, but with these trending hashtags, you got to realize that every single one of you and me and everybody else like us are trying to tag onto these or, or tap into these hashtags attention. Um, so you have the, the one side where it's people uh, or handles uh, that are just doing it just to get visibility where the hashtag has absolutely nothing to do with what they posted. That 
unfortunately, is desensitizing people to maybe somebody like yourself, which is trying to tap into the hashtag in an organic, natural way, right? So their saturation is going to cause that to be more difficult for you. However, if you are going to take that approach um, of trying to tap into the top 10 trending hashtags like Grammys or something like that, that it's got to be quick, right? And it has to be something that is going to be unique. It has to be something that's going to be a bit witty. Something, they have to be able to pay attention, um, or they have to be able to uh, pull in people's attention outside of the other 100,000 hashtags out there of Grammys, right? Or Teen Wolf, or whatever it might be. So it's definitely a good strategy if you have a full-time team that's kind of monitoring your social media, probably more likely. Right? One thing I would say is that uh, this is highly overused and um, good for situations like BizBuzz, creating your own hashtag. But creating your own hashtags is extremely hard. I mean, it's the easiest thing to actually create it. But to actually get your own hashtag to gain any type of virality is extremely difficult. Uh, if you're at an event, it's easier because every time you share a post, a picture of me or a picture of the audience or whatever it might be, chances are you're going to want to hashtag it so that it falls into a, a um, Rebel Mouse account or some sort of you know, feed where you can go back and they can pull it and things like that. But if you're a business that's just trying to go out into the social world and use and, and create a hashtag, it's going to be extremely hard. Even the biggest companies like McDonald's and whatnot, like they create their hashtags and it, people tweeting about McDonald's uh, with their hashtag versus overall, it's such a small little tiny amount uh, of their actual uh, mentions that are actually using the hashtag that they want people to use. So imagine that with a smaller entity. It's just it's, it's not going to catch unless it's something super witty, it's attached to something else that went viral, like a video or a picture or something like that. So uh, I'm not saying don't do it. It definitely can still work, right? That's where trending hashtags come from. Um, but you just have to be cognizant that it's tough to create your own hashtag and get it to work. So I guess to get back to your question, Using big hashtags is definitely valuable if you do it in an organic way and it's fast. Um, using a long-standing hashtag that you have okay, uh, is potentially valuable, but it's just like anything else, like growing your brand. Don't expect that somebody, everybody's going to use your hashtag right away. It's got to be consistent. It has to be in every single thing that you put out, everywhere, across every platform. Your business cards have to say it. Okay, If you expect any use, any usage, uh, from your hashtag, it's got to be everywhere just like your brand does. It's got to be part of your brand, right? I'll give you an example. I just started a little YouTube show. Um, so I don't, I don't do too, I'm not a great writer. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, I'm not great at writing. I'm, I suck at grammar. Uh, so I tend to film things a lot better. Or if I write a blog post, I'll use a little app that transcribes it for me um, and then have somebody edit it for me, okay? I'm just not a good writer. So uh, anyways, I started a YouTube show that's more, that is my blog, so to speak. It's called Rise and Grind. And I hashtagged it, hashtag Rise and Grind. I don't expect that that is going to be a huge hashtag uh, probably ever, let alone anytime soon. But my goal with that hashtag is that two years from now, when I've done a Rise and Grind episode every single day, which is what I'm attempting to do, so far so good, uh, that if somebody wants to go and search the hashtag Rise and Grind, there's my full feed of all the episodes I've ever done across every single platform that uses hashtags, right? So my, my approach with that is that it's creating a record of all of the content. So two years from now, people can search it, right? So anyways, you just, you gotta, you gotta see what your goals are with the hashtag. Um, with Twitter's changes, who the heck knows what's going to happen, how they're going to rank them. They got moments now where they're compiling information about the election and different things like that. And, um, you can post GIFs now, you know, uh, uh, right from the app. It's just, it's ever evolving, so it'll be interesting. I have no idea where it's going to go, um, but it's going to be valuable. So anybody out there that says Twitter's like dead or it's dying or it's too saturated, I would, I would hold out for just a little bit longer. 
Yes? Do you use any specific tools to measure ROI? Yeah, we use them all. We use them all. I mean, yeah. So we use Hootsuite. We used Sprout Social for a while. We moved back to Hootsuite because it allows more scale. Um, we, use the, we use the individual platforms. Um, so like Facebook Insights and Twitter Analytics and Google, Google Analytics it kind of funnels down into that for traffic reports and things like that. Um, so we, we really use them independently. We don't use any huge big data type stuff, um, honestly, because we prefer to look at it a little bit more organically. Uh, it might take a little bit more time, but it just gives us an idea of which platforms are doing what rather than compiling everything into just kind of a snapshot. So, um, you know, it's, data is very important. Don't get me wrong, right? It's very important if you're in the agency side and you have to show your clients like, hey, we did these Facebook ads, they got this many clicks, and then out of this many clicks, they got this many conversions. Like, they're going to want to see that stuff, right? Um, or if you're working as a, a marketing director of a firm, right, like your boss or the owner or whoever is going to want to see that stuff. So data is very important. But the piece that a lot of people are missing is kind of going back to the, uh, the, j just the, the awareness that you're building. And I know that is really tough to sell to anybody, to, you know, to a company or, or to a CEO or any C-level executive to say, like, hey, we need to put time into this because it's getting us lots of attention. All right, well, what's that attention going to get us on the flip side? How many dollars? And that's where you go and say, well, how much time can we put into it? Right here, like if we get this many you know, this many followers, then uh, you know, here's the attention that we can get, and if we get this many engagement, you can break down the numbers that way. But ultimately, you have to get them to realize that sending them, them sending you out to marketing event or networking events, them putting their ad in a uh, entrepreneurmagazine.com or putting a display ad on Syracuse.com or you know wherever it is, like that is still gaining attention that even if there is an ROI associated with that, the ROI is probably much bigger than what is calculated because it's long term. The attention is, is everything. That attention, if you can keep it, is a lifetime of sales and business, whether it's direct from that customer, whether it's that customer says, hey, you need X, Y, and Z services, you should go check out these people. Referrals, I mean, all of your incoming sales comes from attention, right? And so you can't put uh, a number on um, the ROI of attention. It's, it's just not there. It's never going to be there. But the data can get you from A to B. It can say, like, hey, this platform works. It brought this much traffic to our website, and our sales went up 2% this month. I can't give you, like, how many of those, you know, were sales. Um, I mean, you might be able to if you have your... Uh, unique URL setup and things like that, but in the whole scheme of things, data is just a way that you can validate the idea that uh, getting all this attention is going to pay off. Right? Even the biggest companies out there, when they hire an agency, they usually mark, they usually measure like their earnings reports or year-over-year -year sales increases and things like that. They all use data. They use big data uh, to connect the dots and show that things are wor working. But ultimately, when they decide the next year if they're going to bring an agency back or they're going to keep this initiative or not, it's did our sales go up, right? Good example is Nilla Wafers put all of their eggs into social media, um, uh, all of their marketing budget into social media and saw an 11% raise um, in their revenue the next year when they've been stagnant for like 10 years or something like that before that. So they're like, duh, social media works, obviously. You know, but um, yeah, I mean, data's good, but it's not everything. Any other questions? Yes? Do you ever see kind of anything with uh, like specific channels that have a lower signal to noise ratio? Where, you know, if you go after a top 10 Twitter trending topic or hashtag, you're, you're in the ocean with, with a million other shows. Absolutely. So Your hashtag, or you're saying somebody else's that's not the big boys, but it's. Maybe it's the big boys, but you're trying to tease out something that maybe, you know, you, it would be lovely to have perfectly unique content. Maybe it's not quite as unique, still catchy, but 
but it can be served a lot more effectively in a channel that has a little bit more clear communication and elbow room. Absolutely. And you can find these all over the place. You know, so um, there's tons of websites where you can measure the ha like the hashtag uh, um, like reach, you know, and, and, and how big a hashtag really is and, and uh, how many people are using it and retweeting and things like that. Um, just Google it. There's a bunch of little sites out there. But so you could tap into those uh, networks. This is especially good for really niche, niche networks, right? Um, and so if you wanted to tap into the network just for conversation, it's huge. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a, a really valuable thing. Um, it, and it's, it's, you're much more likely to be able to get some sort of response out of those too. So that's the other big thing that maybe you're making the point to is that, um, yeah, you might get some eyeballs on a big hashtag and you might get some views on Twitter and maybe you'll get a few retweets or favorites and things like that. Um, but if you tap into something a little bit more medium, uh, you're probably more likely to get some actual conversation going versus just the quick, easy, lazy, heart, uh, you know, retweet, things like that. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Does it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, so the the last thing I want to leave you with is uh, with all with taking all of your questions and you know seeing like th these are the you know small little tactics that we want to adopt and you know does this work and does that work and. Um, as marketers, we're always looking at the fine tuning, right? That's our job. Our job is to figure out how do we do this a little bit better? How do we do that a little bit better? Um, you know, how do we measure this a little bit better? Good Monster, uh, our, our analytics director, all he does all day long is like look at analytics and, and be able to, uh, try to try to fine tune things. But the overarching uh, mission of any marketing is, again, I'm going to beat it into your brains to get the attention. So I stress to not waste your time on using a platform for the sake of using a platform or doing something because another brand is doing it. Because the only way to stand out is to do something different in a different way with a different light um, that's slightly outside the box on a platform where you are more likely, using a hashtag, that you are, you are more likely to get the attention because Going into a, a, uh, a sea full of a million different people doing the same thing you're doing, okay, is not worth as much time as going into a sea of uh, uh, 200 uh, people that are doing what you're doing, right? You might get one person out of the million to respond to you. Maybe you get 10, right? But if you get 50 out of the 200 C, Right? You're going to just have a bigger ROI when we go back to the ROI. So don't feel like you have to be on every single lev uh, level that everybody else is on or that everybody in your industry is on or this new plat Anchor, I go back to the app that just came out. Um, it's a super cool app. I would, I would definitely check it out if you want to. It's really cool. You, it's it's, the, it's the, the social media network out there that has the best chance for you to actually have a conversation with somebody. Literally, it's like leaving people voicemails. And then leaving people's voice, it's like playing phone tag with somebody over and over and over again. But I'm not gonna be spending a ton of time on it because I don't have a radio show, I'm not a musician. Um, I, I could teach some people things right now about like marketing and social media and that's kind of where I started out. Um, but the people that I see that are really doing well on there are musicians, comedians, podcasters, people with radio shows, um, and, and those are the ones that most of the people are looking at right now. So I haven't found a way to make that where I'm in the upper 10% of people that are getting engagement right there. So I'm just not spending my time there like I am on like a Snapchat, where I'm learning every day how Snapchat works so that I can do, I, we can perform better uh, campaigns for our clients on Snapchat. Because even though a lot of companies aren't there yet, I know that in the next six months, they're going to be coming to us saying, so about that Snapchat thing, like what's that all about? Why is, this, why is it in the news every single day, every hour out of the day? 
So just pay attention to where you can get the most ROI, AKA the most attention, and try your best to focus on just that while maybe dabbling in the other things like Anchor, just to make sure that, that there's not value there in the next six months or so. Thank you everybody, have a great day, enjoy the rest of the conference.